All right, fans, we are back. We are getting ready for a banger of a game that should be coming up. The I was told that the last two games are the ones that everybody's been waiting for. But before we get to that, I want to thank you, the fans, for being out there and hanging in there with us. It's been a long day. We had a weather delay. So when Mother Nature calls, we answer. And it's about the safety of the kids. So, you know, you have a lightning delay and all that goes with that. But we've had some great football today. And we're getting ready for the Miami Garden Ravens and the Twin City Outlaws. Now, my understanding is that these two teams, this thing could go either way. But you never know in the great game of football how this is going to turn out. Now, just a quick recap of today's events. I'm just going to look right uh, uh, this weekend's events. Uh, you had the Big East gas station boys going down to the Ellenwood Gators. You had the Fort Lauderdale Hurricanes taking a victory from the North Philly Blackhawks. You had the Atlanta Elite winning 20 to 20, uh, losing 20 to 28 to the Municipal Raiders. Raiders coming away with the victory. The Brick City boys, 46, the East Side Bulls, zero. And you just had the MBK Tigers getting shut out to the Mac Dolphins, 35 to nothing. So don't let the scores fool you. All these teams are well coached. They play very well. Cam Newton on the field right now, talking to the players. And not only encouraging them, but doing a little bit of coaching up as well. And we certainly appreciate what Cam Newton does for the youth. The motto is bless the babies. And he has certainly done that, him and his family. So we want to give a big shout out to Cam Newton. And we also want to thank C1N, Cam Newton and his personnel for trusting Moxie Media with today's broadcast uh, chores. I'm Freddie Flowers. I'm glad to be here with you. And we'll be underway shortly. The captains are on the field. And They're going over the rules, the basics. There's the coin. He shows that to the players. So there is the toss. And it looks like the Outlaws have won the toss. So it looks like they're going to defer, and they're picking the end zone that they want to defend to the st uh, start the contest. So the Outlaws will start out defending the north end zone. The Ravens will defend the south end zone. And we're about to get this underway. And based on what I hear, there should be plenty of fireworks. This should be a high energy contest. We've seen a lot of great defense in all of these games, but as you know, if you get the advantage and you get one defense starting to wear out before the other, lots of points can show up magically. So we'll have to see how this works itself out. We still have one contest after this one. as they get set to kick it off. 
The Ravens will also have their 13 U team out taking on the rare breeds in the final contest of the C1N Labor Day Classic. So number four of the Ravens, pardon me, of the Outlaws, will be handling the kicking chores. I do not have a roster for the Outlaws, but they do have their names on the back of the jersey. So I will do my best to try to catch the names on the back of the jersey. Outlaws wearing red on black. The Ravens wearing purple on gray with the white helmets. And here we go. And that one is going to be returned. Number 30. For the Outlaws, getting in there quick. I think that was number eight on the return, Antoine Jones. Number 30 will get credit for that stop. And that is Jackson for the Outlaws. So here come the Ravens, and they have a healthy front by all accounts, and they're going to go trips left. Motion by the quarterback. Number one, the ball carrier. He's going to be met immediately on the line. Number 32 coming up with the stop. Holmes with the tackle. That ball carried by Johnson for the Ravens. No gain on the play, brings up second down. This time, number three carries it, has some room, and it's going to go down the sideline, and no one's going to touch him going and gone. No flags on the field. Roderick Lewis, the third. Races off to his left. And just like that, the Ravens are on the board. Wait a minute. Oh, hold your horses. Well, it is a touchdown. Okay, I thought something was going on that I missed, but it was merely a sideline warning. So the flock, as they call themselves, yeah, get on the board first. Let's see if they can convert. They're going to go for two as the ball is spotted at the five yard line. There's the fade route, and that is no good. I honestly thought a flag was going to come flying for interference, but maybe there's something I missed. Nine fifteen remaining in the first quarter. Ravens jump out first. So 
So the flock gets set to kick it. That looks like Eric Presley handling the chores. And there's the kick. It's going to take a Raven bounce. Number two on the return tries to find a seam before he's wrapped up. Taylor coming up after the return. Met by a flock, no pun intended, of Raven def defenders. That ball's going to be spotted at the 39 yard line. Where the Outlaws will start their first offensive drive of the contest. So there's the wishbone number two is going to be met immediately. Taylor is going to be met immediately by number six, Morgan. So there's a loss of about two yards on that play. It'll be second and 12 for Twin Cities. And zero, the ball carrier tries to muscle his way, but he can't get away from the defender. Number 25. He's going to bring down, and that's Moss. Irving with the stop for the Ravens. So it's third and 12. And it looks like we have a bit of confusion trying to get the play call in. So we are going to go four wide. Number four puts it in the air, has the open man. But he's going to be wrapped up quickly by number 10. So after a gain of five, it's fourth down. And that was Prince who caught the ball for Twin Cities. When City comes out to right. right. They're going to go for it. He puts it up. Does he have an open man? And that one is going to fall incomplete. The intended receiver, 18. And as a result of that play, that is going to be turned over on downs. Hardaway, the intended receiver. So the Raven offense comes back out onto the field. Ball spotted at the 43. Outlaw stopped on that last drive. The Ravens with a big play on offense to start number four. And he's going to go bowl his way. And there's a flag. The ball gets to the 41. And we'll get the call from the official in just a second. Okay, that is waved off. So the ball will be spotted at the 41. Number four, Adams, was the ball carrier. And 
Here's the give to number three. And he's going to be met by a host of outlaw defenders. And that is Lewis. So it is third and four for the Ravens. A sea of black and red jerseys bringing down Lewis. And I'm looking at that Raven line. And I'll be the first to admit, I wouldn't want to fight those guys for the last chicken leg at the table. Movement up front. And that's going to be offsides by all accounts from what I could see. And bingo, that's what it is. So that will net a fresh set of downs. And opportunities like that, you don't want to squander if you're a defense. So the Ravens with a fresh set of downs. Three men in the backfield, shotgun formation. There's a handoff to number, and he's going to be wrapped up quickly. Number 22 for the Outlaws will get credit on that tackle. Uh, pardon me, 32. Three in the backfield again. This time to give is to number one, and he's going to go to his left. And they're stretching out that defense. He's going to go out of bounds. Right around the 21 yard line. Johnson, the ball carrier. So the chains move. And the Ravens get a fresh set of downs. Four forty nine remaining in the first quarter. And that big line continues to push. And there's a flag on the field. Delay of game against the Miami Garden Ravens. So with that penalty, the ball goes to the 26. And one of the things, if you're an offense putting together a sustained drive, the last thing you want to do is give the defense a break. You want to continue to wear them down, and if you've got a front like Miami has, you certainly want to keep doing that. Number three bounces it out to his right and finds some room before he's pushed out of bounds by Taylor. Lewis. Will be about three yards short of a first. Ball's going to get spotted at the 15. So he'll need four yards in all. Or I should say the Ravens will need four yards in all to get the first. Before the ball carrier. And there was a big hit at the end of that play. I believe that was number four, Adams, the ball carrier. But the Outlaws. Bought the stone and stopped them cold, but it's a fresh set of downs nonetheless. And they have to get rid of it. Quarterback under pressure. And that is Dulane. So that'll bring up second down. It's goal to go. Ball is right at the 10.
And here's a chance for the Outlaws to make a statement. And here comes the run again. Number three stretching it out. There is a flag. So before any calls are made, because I see the pylon's been run over, we'll see what that call is. Holding. Rut row. And that's going to cost him 10 from the spot of the foul. So we'll see what the final mark of that is. Two fifty five remaining in the first quarter. Ball goes back to the twenty. And the Ravens are going to take a timeout with two forty nine remaining in the first quarter. Fans, we want to thank you for being here at the C1N Labor Day Classic. I'm Freddie Flowers, the voice of Moxie Media. We'll be right back. They got Perrier Water and Donuts. I like the water. Two meaning of ghetto boots. <laughs> Call puts the ball at the 20. There's the snap. Throws up the fade route. And that pass falls incomplete. And there is a flag. The defender never turned around. So we know it's about to happen there. Pass interference. And after getting a beneficial penalty, the Outlaws turn around with pass interference and put the ball right back to the 10. So it remains second and goal to go. And the give is number four. He tries to turn up in the middle and he's gonna be met immediately by number five. And that is Hill. Number five, Hill on the tackle. Adams with the carry. They'll get to the nine yard line. It'll be third and goal to go. As I said earlier, the Outlaws trying to make a statement here by holding serve. And the quarterback's under pressure, and he's going to go down at the 20. And lurking about back there, there's the big man, number 19. And I was just saying, you know, if you want to make a statement, with your opponent staring at the end zone you're defending, that was the time to do it. And by gosh, that's exactly what the Outlaws did. They got after the quarterback and made him pay, and now it is fourth and goal to go from the 19. So you've got to believe this is going in the air, and lo and behold, it's an empty backfield. He puts it up, and it is picked off! 
It is picked off in the end zone by the Outlaws. What a turn of events. Miami was driving down the field. And just like that, the ball was turned over. Now, here's the other part of that tale. If he had simply intercepted it and went down in the end zone, you'd have a touchback. He came out to the one. What are the odds that the Ravens are going to send everything but the kitchen sink, the house, the hammer, the plates, the dishes, tool shed, you name it? Watch the white cap, please. Just watch the white cap. Straight ahead and nothing there. They're going to blow that one dead. They're still at the one yard line. No gain on the play. Man, that is dangerous territory. That big line of Miami is tough sledding. I mean, look at big number 99 out there. That is Allen, Sap, number 98. And he's built like a sap we all might recognize. First name Warren. They're going ahead and they're trying to push the pile. He might have got a yard out of that or two. And they're going to get to the three. Well, it's actually spotted just forward of the two. So maybe not quite the three. And it is third down. And we have a timeout on the field. Thank you for hanging in here with us at the C1N Labor Day Classic. Moxie Media Productions would like to thank Cam Newton and his staff for trusting Moxie Media with today's broadcast. We'll be right back after the timeout. Uh, I won. change of quarters. The first quarter ended with the Outlaws getting an interception, but in the process of trying to run it back, the Outlaws get tackled at the one and start their series at the one and thus far have only been able to get the nose of the football to the three yard line. So this is where it gets interesting. And this is dangerous territory. And that big Miami front. So something isn't right. <laughs> and that whistle is blown. 
And the Outlaws, you could tell one of their players is like, think, guys, think. But wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> well, I guess that answers that. So the penalty goes against the Ravens. Wow. And he's going to be dropped back around the three yard line. So a loss of five. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Just when you catch a break, it turns around on you. And we know this is punting territory. <laughs> so. There's a flag. False start. Against Twin City. Getting the interception, catching a break to get a little more room to work, and then a couple of penalties. Now has the ball at the one and a half yard line. The play is blown dead again. And Miami Garden is going to take a timeout. Fans will be right back. They got Perrier Ward and Donuts. I like the water. True meaning of ghetto boots. <laughs> with 834 remaining in the first half of play. The pace of this game has slowed considerably due to penalties. Other than the one big offensive play, both defenses have shined thus far. And there's a the kick. And it's going to take a bounce in favor of the Outlaws. It'll get to the 25. And you know, if you can punt it 25 yards at the age of 11, I still call that impressive. The unfortunate part is that it leaves very good field position for Miami. So we'll see what the Twin City defense brings as they try to get the ball back. They're only down six to nothing. There's a lot of football left to be played. So shotgun formation, single man in the backfield, three men to the left, one to the right. Goes into motion. There's the quick out. Number one has it. Knee bounces it out. Tries to stay along the sideline. He'll go out of bounds just inside the 15. We'll see where the final spot is. And there's a flag on the field, and it's holding. And you know who that's going to go against. So that's going to put him back. And 
And that ball will go to the 35 yard line. So it'll be first and 20. Number four goes into motion, three to the left. Single man in the backfield, one to the right. There's the snap, there's the handoff. And number three still grinding his legs, and he's ultimately going to be brought down by a pile of defenders, number nine. And that. I believe that's Cromwell. Lewis, the ball carrier. And there's a flag on the field. And that is Crowell. And there's another flag. Unnecessary roughness. So we have a false start against Miami. Personal foul. That's going to go against Twin Cities. Got to give credit to the Miami quarterback. I mean, he sat up there and like, hey, what's the deal? So here's what they're going to do. They're going to walk off the fault start and then assess the personal foul. So ultimately, the ball should be spotted if I remember right and got my math right around the 25 24 yard line and that's where it sits. So it is second down and nine at this point. And we have been stuck on second down for a minute. Seven thirty remaining in the first half as the clock continues to roll. That big line gets set. Number one, the ball carrier. And number one is going to be met quickly right around the 25. So there's no gain on that play. And that's going to bring up third down. And if I said it once, I've said it a thousand times, these defenses are showing up in these games. So more of the same. And I would say that's probably the big theme outside of the Brick City Boys and East Side Bulls contest. Defense has been the name of the game. Here's number three trying to find some room and bounce just right. He's going to have one man to beat. And he's going to run out of bounds. Inside the 10, he's going to get to the eight. And he's going to net a fresh set of downs. So it'll be first and goal to go. So nifty running by Roderick Lewis the third. Get some huge yardage. So once again, Twin City wanting to make a statement. Number four of the ball carrier is going to be stopped at the five. And that is Adams. Hill on that stop. 
along with number 22. 19, Turner coming in. So the second and goal to go. Ball's at the five. Number three, Lewis, the ball carrier. And it'll be third and goal to go. Ball is at the three yard line. We've seen this scene before. Question is, is will the outcome be the same? So they get the play from the sideline. And like I said, that big line up front, it could be boiling down to which defense gets winded first. Number three, the ball carry is going to be brought down for a loss of a yard. Lewis brought down number 32, getting in on the action. And it is fourth and goal to go again. The official speaking with the outlaw ball player. And Miami Garden Ravens are going to take a timeout. Fans, we're glad you're here with us at the C1N Labor Day Classic. Moxie Media Productions would like to thank Cam Newton and his staff for trusting Moxie Media with today's productions. I'm Freddie Flowers. We'll be right back. 4.30 remaining in the first half. So the Ravens, having been here before, they have that big line. Here's a give number three. He puts it up in the air, and it's intercepted again! And this time, let's see, we got flags on the field. Hold on. Holding that penalty is going to be declined. And once again, not going down in the end zone after the interception, Twin City finds themselves on the one yard line. And just as they were getting lined up, you heard me say, have we seen this scene before? And did it happen? It did. <laughs> so. so the flag's still on the field. Okay, the white hat picks up his flag. And the penalty is going to give Twin City some breathing room. Wait a minute. The 
The Ravens have the ball. That's what I get for not paying attention. Oh. A huge sack by number 44. And that is Patrick. Four eighteen remaining in the second quarter. These defenses have been playing lights out. That'll put the ball back at the twenty. So now, after all that, Twin Cities runs the ball. Number two, Taylor handling that work. He'll get to the 24 yard line. Number two escapes some tackles, and he's going to get to the 30. He'll be brought down by number two, Ronnie Murth Jr. Taylor, the ball carrier. And that's going to move the sticks. Ball at the 30 yard line. 326 remaining in the second quarter. Both teams, it seems like the irresistible force meeting the immovable object. Big zero running it, giving the stiff arm to 25 and taking him for a ride. He'll get to the 35 yard line. So it'll be second and five for the outlaws. So they will go four wide. Single man in the backfield. Put it in the air. And the intended receiver is number five. And that is Hill. Moss Jr. was the ball carry on the previous run play for the Outlaws. So the ball is at the 35 yard line. It's third down, 214 remaining in the first half. So we're going to go four wide trips to the left single man to the right. And Twin Cities is going to take a timeout and we'll be right back. We're at Golden Corral. We're feeding the children. Everybody got to eat so they can leave me alone. Because I'm going to sleep. Everybody, we did a thing. Like 
So both of these defenses not really giving an inch. You had one big play. Uh, Roderick Lewis the third went around to the left and rode the sideline all the way to the end zone. And that has been it. Otherwise this has been a defensive Donnie Brook. Number four is going to get a first down and he'll get across the 40 yard line before he stopped. So 205 remaining in the half. Long the ball carrier. And these teams are just slugging it out. One big play has been all the difference in the game. Number seven with the grab and he takes off with it before he is upended by number four, Adams. And number seven is shaking up. He's right there near his sideline, and that is Williams, number seven for Twin City, and he's up and under his own power. So with that catch and run, the ball will be spotted at the 45 yard line in Raven territory. And we got another we have a flag on the field. And that is Darren Johnson able to come off under his own power. So now all of that is sorted out. Two men in the backfield, three wide. Number two, Taylor tries to find some room. He'll get a yard. It'll be second and nine. We're about a minute 18 remaining in the first half. Twin City's going to do something. They better do it in a hurry. And he is double covered. And that is not interference. He had a step, but was well defended. So that'll bring up third down. And clearly, Twin City understands the clock by firing it down there for all the marbles. So the coaches try to get the players aligned. And once again, it appears to be some confusion. And we got a Twin City is going to have to take a timeout. We'll be right back to the C1 in Labor Day Classic coming to you from Westlake High School, just south of Atlanta, Georgia. We'll be right back.
right we got a minute remaining in the half. Single man in the backfield. Three to the left, one to the right. Number four is going to be stopped for a loss behind the 50. A six yard loss. A probably seven yard loss on the play. And this will be the final timeout for Twin Cities. 47 seconds remaining in the first half. We'll be right back. We've had a defense of Donnie Brook. Slugfest. Whatever you want to call it, whatever colloquialism you want to use. One big play has made all the difference in this game, and it is six to nothing in favor of Miami. And that one. Is broken up. Number 10 for the Ravens, Corey Roll. And there's a flag on the field. Let's see what that is. Holding. And that's going to go against the Outlaws. That'll be declined for sure. And that's exactly what it is. So it'll be first and 10 with 40 seconds remaining. I would expect. The Ravens to take some shots down the field. So it's first and 10 at the 50. So we've got multiple in motion. There's the quick out. And how about that? He sheds the blocker. And I believe that is Cromwell. He's going to have to come off for at least one play. They can check his equipment. I'm probably Crowell. I think I said Cromwell. That's Crowell. So empty backfield. And he puts it up. The intended receiver, number five, Mollard. And that's going to do it for the first half. Six to nothing. Ravens over the Outlaws.
Here we go. Oh, man. Come on, Palmer. Oh, man. Ooh. 
The number one point receiver is going double or nothing. Clap it up. He's going double or nothing. Clap it up. All right, fans, welcome back. What a contest we've had. One big play by Miami Gardens, and that's it. That is your score, six to nothing. The defenses have been outstanding. Miami getting into the red zone and failing to cash in multiple times, that could come back to haunt them. Now, one thing Miami depends on is that big line, but as the game wears on, big guys tend to get tired. Twin Cities, you know, the Outlaws have been sure tacklers. Uh, when they wrap up, they wrap up. So defensively, back and forth, forth and back. How's this one going to end? We're going to find out. We're glad that you're hanging with us here today. We've had a lot of football played, a lot of football played here at the C1N Labor Day Classic. We'd like to thank Cam Newton and his staff for selecting Moxie Media to handle the video productions. We've had a great time today, and we've got one more contest as the 13U Ravens take on the 13U Gorillas. So that'll be happening shortly. We'll be right back as these teams get ready for the second half of play. We are back. Uh, it's been a whale of a first half defensively. Miami wasting opportunities inside the red zone to cash in. Two huge interceptions. A penalty knocks out a touchdown. So you have 21 points theoretically left on the field. And we're sitting here at six to nothing. Could this come back to haunt the Ravens? We will see. So we're getting ready to kick off. And remember. The selection at the beginning when the coin toss was made. So Twin Cities 
will get apparently uh, Twin City will get the kickoff. Number 21, Presley, there to kick it. Number one and two, respectively. For the Outlaws on the return. And number one is going to be the returner. And he's going to be stopped just shy of the 40. May have made it there. And they're going to spot it at the 40 yard line. So Twin City on offense. And Twin City is showing some flashes, but continue to go for and out in the first half. So wishbone formation this time. Number two, the ball carrier, he slices his way across the 40. And he's going to get a gain of two, so it'll be second and eight. The Outlaws have to find a way to consistently get those chunks of yards that they have demonstrated that they're capable of. So wonder what kind of halftime adjustments we'll see. We're coming to you from Westlake High School. Just south of Atlanta proper. Number seven, the ball carrier, finds some room up the middle. And he's going to get a solid gain of six yards to make it a very manageable third and two. The ball will go to the 48-yard line. And I want you to watch the big men in this game. Keep an eye on that. And that play is going to be blown dead. So it's offsides against Miami. That's going to net a first down for the Outlaws. And the ball is going to go to the 47 yard line. And there's another whistle. And the Ravens are going to take a timeout. And they're taking one at 8-10 into the third quarter. Let's keep an eye on that one because they only have two more left. And the way this game is going, they might have needed all three. We'll be right back. So Miami early in the second half here in the third quarter has taken a timeout. Now, given the way that this game is gone, usually you try to keep those in pockets. Uh, but nonetheless, one already burned up for the Ravens. Wishbone formation. Single man to the right, zero the ball carrier, and he's going to take some folks for a ride, and he's going to end up falling forward to the 44-yard line. So a gain of three on the play. 
will make it second and seven. And that was zero carrying it. Number seven burst through, still on his feet, getting solid yards across the 30. And gets to the 26 yard line before he steps out of bounds. And that's going to be a big first down by Williams. And the Outlaws managing to find a few soft spots in the Miami defense. And Big Zero continuing to pound him, and they can't bring him down, and he keeps churning his feet. And the pile keeps moving, 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 and he is going to go down at the 20-yard line. And that is a six-yard gain, so it'll be second and four. And right now, it looks like the Outlaws are imposing their will on this drive. And do you think they're going to change up what they're doing? Absolutely not. They're still in the wishbone. Single man to the right. Number two gets it, slices up the middle, and he's going to go across the 15 and move the chains. And this is probably this is the first sustained drive that has just been consistent. Well, they down it at the 15. Here come the outlaws, and they're trying to get to the 10, it looks like. They're going, and they haven't stopped yet. And finally, the pile goes down at the 7. So it'll be third and 2. And they're getting it down in distance. Marker straightened out. And there's a flag. And that's a sideline warning. So the ball is actually at the eight. Second and three, and here comes number seven. And he's going to get tripped up. Nice open field tackle. That is number seven, Jaden Ford. Loss of yardage on the play puts the ball at the 10 yard line. So it's a third and five. And we were talking about wasted opportunities inside the red zone. So let's see what happens here. Williams comes out. They stay in the wishbone. He gives the number two. He slices his way and tries to find more room. And he's going to be very close to a first down. That'll be fourth and one. Now this is going to be huge for the Ravens. It is fourth and one. How much you want to bet? Yep, zero gets it, and there he goes, goes, and they're trying to push the pile, but this is not going to happen. The Ravens stopped him inside of the 10 yard line and the ball is going to be turned over on down. Big defensive stand by Miami Gardens and a missed opportunity by the Twin City Outlaws after putting together a very nice drive punishing the Miami front and they come up empty 
once again and remain down six to nothing. So there are the whistles to get play going again. So the Ravens have the ball. And this is where it could get interesting because the outlaws have been able to get in the backfield and tackles for loss can be huge right here. And that big Miami front knows that they are needed now more than ever. So let's see what happens. There's pressure! And he almost had a safety back there. He'll get about a yard or so out of that. And that'll bring up second down. And you can guarantee that the outlaws are gonna try to bring the wood. One of the key things that the coaches, and I'm sure they've told them this, is do not run backwards. When you're this deep in your own territory, that is the last thing you want to do. And there's movement up front. And yes, this is going to go again. Oh, no. The Ravens. Wow, this is going to put that ball at the two. Okay, they readjusted to the three. Not something the Ravens wanted. Here come the outlaws. And they go around the edge. Number three, once again, getting the call and he has gotten them out of trouble more than once. And that is Roderick Lewis the third, with a huge gain and lots of breathing room. There is a flag and back it comes. Yep, there it is in the end zone. And that's got to be holding. This ball effectively is going to be at the one and a half yard line. Lewis having got him out of trouble one time had a touchdown called back due to a penalty. And when you have success like that call back for a penalty it takes the wind out your sails a bit. So, Max protect, here they go. And this time, Lewis is gonna be wrapped up quickly. So we're finally gonna get to third down with 2.54 remaining in the third. And this game has basically been stuck inside the 10 yard line down here for quite some time. That's a testament to both of these defenses. However, Miami holds the edge because of the big play by Lewis early on in the contest. And nothing happening there is a flag. And it's offsides. Outlaws trying to get a jump. Now that's only five yards. So they'll replay third down. And he says it's a first down for the Ravens, so there must have been something else going on. I saw an official with his hands on his hips. 
So that looks like there was a personal foul happening somewhere. So the Ravens get out of a jam with a huge penalty. Oh, the ball was on the ground. And it seems like the center and the quarterback had some miscommunication. That play was blown dead, so there's effectively no gain on the play. May have got half a yard out of it. These defenses really shining in this contest. So it's second down. Number three trying to find room and not much happening there. Number one in the bottom of the pile. Nodding up the ball carrier. And that is Merritt the third. For the outlaws. So it's third down again. Number three turns sideways. And Twin City not giving any quarter. Loss of a yard on the play in his fourth down. And that's the end of the third. Wait a minute, somebody sounded a horn. <laughs> that's not the end of the third. There's 56 seconds on that clock. So we're showing 53 seconds. So another big fourth down for Twin City. Shotgun, they're gonna punt it. And they'll just leave this one alone. It's nuclear at this point. He picks it up! Well, that was dangerous, but he'll get near the 35 yard line. So it is better field position if nothing else. Tried to catch Miami sleeping. Usually when you see a punt like that, you have defenders in the area, that ball is considered nuclear. So, 21 seconds remaining in the third. No score since early in the first quarter where Roderick Lewis III raced down, running to his left and heading down the lane. The PAT was no good. And so Miami has been nursing this lead Thus far in the contest, Twin Cities has been in the red zone but not able to cash in. Number two, the ball carrier. And the ball is on the ground. And the Ravens have it. So it's going to be first and 10 at the 34 yard line. And just after you get a huge defensive stop, you have a turnover. Will this be the difference in this contest? 10 seconds remaining in the third. And this has got to motivate the Ravens players. And you see number 11 hopping around, and he's been a busy bee as well 
for Miami. That's a sign of energy right there. And if you got the energy, you more than likely have the momentum. There's a snap. There's a give. There's number three working his way, bouncing around to his right, and he's going to get across the 40 before he goes out of bounds at the 37-yard line, and that'll do it for the third quarter. And here come the Ravens after a huge turnover by the Outlaws. Thank you for hanging in here with us at the C1N Labor Day Classic. For those of you watching on pay-per-view, you want to make sure you know that on Tuesday on C1N channel on YouTube, these games will be available for you to share with other families. There's a flag on the field. And that was going to go against Twin Cities. So the Outlaws got two flags. And the officials. Apparently, one of the officials uh, were, had contact made with him, and you do not touch the officials. So here we are. In the fourth quarter. And the Ravens now have the ball at the 22 and. The Outlaws not draw, giving any quarter homes. Number 32 with the stop. And Lewis, the third, looks like cramps. As his teammates stretch him out. And he's going to have to come off the field. Flags you saw earlier, fans, is why the ball ended up around the 22 yard line. So the Ravens put it in the air, and that's complete to number one. He breaks a tackle and skips around, and he's going to end up going down just shy of the 10. It's a first down for Miami. So it ball is at the 12 yard line. Ravens continuing to drive. Number two has room and he's going to be upended just inside the five. So they're going to mark him down at the six yard line. Number two gets the call once again, and he's going to go down just shy of the end zone at the one. He didn't quite get in there. So it'll be first and goal to go for the Miami Garden Ravens. And let's see. If they can cash this in, there's flags. False start, and that's going to cost them five yards. 
The Ravens have not been able to close the deal multiple times inside the red zone. And once again, a penalty is going to push them back. So the ball is going to be spotted at the six. So some people would say, well, what's the big deal with that? Well, now Twin City will be able to scheme a little bit different to try to stop them. Miami has had multiple four and outs in the shadow of the end zone. So there is a snap and the handoff. No give. They can't get past the five. Ball is at the six. So no gain on the play. And you got to wonder, is it just me or does it seem like the outlaw defense just really clamps down when they find themselves with their backs against the end zone? And that's not a bad thing. But you really don't want to find yourself there to begin with. So here we go, number three gets the goal and he's picked up immediately. And they're going to blow that play dead. Loss of yardage on the play, puts the ball at the eight. It is third down. Will the Ravens have an answer for the outlaw defense inside the 10 yard line? It has not worked at any time in this contest thus far. And here we are again. They're going to try to put it in the air, and he puts it up. And that one is caught. Touchdown, Ravens, number three. And there are no flags this time. Lewis with the grab. And that will make up for the one that was called back due to a penalty early on in the game. So as it stands right now, it's 12 to nothing pending the PAT. And they're going to go for one. The ball spotted at the three yard line. So shotgun formation. Empty backfield man goes into motion. And that one is going to be broken up. So it'll be 12 to nothing with 5.59 remaining in the contest. And this game is absolutely not out of reach of the Outlaws. But either way, on both sides of the ball, you can call this the game of missed opportunities. And right now, though, the biggest miss will come to Twin City as they are down 12 to nothing with 5.59 remaining in the game. Now, if I were the coaches, I'd be telling our players, hey, it ain't over yet. Plenty of time left to play. We just have to be efficient. Get down there and answer the bell. The defense has played outstanding. No reason to believe that they couldn't get another stop if they had to. There's the kick. It takes a little bit of a hop. Number two on the return, finds the seam up the middle and almost gets away. He gets across the 50 to the 48. So excellent field position.
with 545 remaining in the contest. Be sure to stay with us for the final contest of the day as the 13U Miami Garden Ravens take on the rare breeds. That one is expected to be just as good as this one. And number four gets swallowed up. It looked like the ball came loose. And does Miami have it? They do. The Ravens have the ball. And the momentum shift. There's a flag. So this is probably going to be an excessive celebration call. Unsportsmanlike conduct. I thought it was an excessive celebration with all that was going on on the field, but apparently there's some extracurricular activity by the outlaws. So with that, the ball will be placed at the 31 yard line. Zero fakes the throw and he's going to get to the 31 yard line. Bentley Dulane can't find an open man and turns it upfield himself. Gets a couple of yards out of it. It'll be second and eight. Ball at the 29 yard line. 450 remaining in the contest. The snap to Dulane to give to number three, and he has been the workhorse of the Miami offense. Roderick Lewis the third. You know, if I had mentioned anything about an MVP all day, but Roderick Lewis the third has to be the MVP of this game. Because he would effectively have three touchdowns if not for one being called back. And he has just been kind of the Mr. Everyman for this Miami Gardens Ravens team. And the Ravens are gonna take a timeout. Fans will be right back in just a few. The momentum shift finally broke and it broke in favor of the Miami Garden Ravens. Twin City Outlaws had a stop, got the punt, and that's picked off by Twin Cities. Probably not Twin, yeah, Twin City Outlaws trying to take it up the field. He's still on his feet, 
and he's going to get inside the 45 yard line. Well, Twin City Outlaws with a pick. And I was just talking about momentum shifts. So 337 remaining in the fourth. And I said earlier, coaches need to tell the players, be efficient, get down the field, cash it in to get another opportunity. Miss PATs could be the difference in this game if all were to fall the Twin Cities uh, way. Out on the field. We'll be back in just a few. We're at Golden Corral. We're feeding the children. Everybody got to eat, so they can leave me alone. Because I'm going to sleep. Everybody, we did a thing. City Outlaws do with 337 remaining on the clock. Can they score quick enough to get an onside kick? The ball is in the air and they have it. Number seven trying to break some tackles. He'll get to the 25 yard line and that'll be a first down. So the Outlaws getting the play. Clock continuing to run towards three minutes. Long getting his players set. Number seven Williams had to catch on the previous play. Long rolls out to his right. He puts it up as an open man. And he's going to fall across the goal line, it appears, but they're going to say he's down at the one. My, oh, my. And he does. His knees come down just shy of the end zone. This is a huge play here. First and goal to go. There's a signal. There's the give, and he is going to score. Touchdown, Outlaws. 227 remaining in the contest. Those defenses finally giving way. And they're gonna go for two. The ball is at the five yard line. And the coach is making sure their players understand what it is they need to do. Williams, Patrick, and Long are going to pass the word. And Williams, the big back. And he's going to be wrapped up. So nothing happening on that PAT. So it is 12 to 6. 
Outlaws down by one score with 227 remaining. This game has turned out to be everything they said it was going to be with this 11U group. Fans, we want to thank you for getting on board with the pay-per-view here at the C1N Labor Day Classic. I'm Freddie Flowers with Moxie Media Productions. We want to thank Cam Newton and his staff for trusting us with today's broadcast. So this kickoff can be very interesting. The way the defense is played, I can't say you have much to fear with an onside kick. Number 14, trying to figure out where he should be. And they kick it straight up. And that's going to be returned by number four, Adams. I want to remind all the fans out there, C1N is all about blessing the babies. And today has certainly been a blessing to witness some really great football action. As the sun sets and we're under the lights. So Miami knows that they have got to make some hay and not much happening there. Number three, Roderick Lewis the third. Getting wrapped up, there is a flag. That flag is coming from that sideline over there. What is the call? So we'll see what the call is ultimately. And that one's going to be waved off. So loss of yardage on the play. It'll be second and 11. Clock sitting at 2.14. And the official says to get the clock running. So there it goes. Twin City looking to get another stop. Direct snap to number three. He's going to step out of some tackles. And he's going to be bounced out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Clock continues to run. Third and three. Miami milking the clock. And they have no reason to be in a hurry. Trying to protect that six point lead. Rex snap to three. He goes the wrong direction, and he's going to go down at the 38. And there's a huge fourth down. 101 remaining in the game. It doesn't get any better than this. If Twin City gets to stop, another opportunity awaits them. And you better believe they're going to give it everything they got. Fans, we thank you for hanging in there with us. The next contest coming up after this one, the 13U Miami Gardens Ravens. 
taking on the 13U rare breeds. So here we go. Coming to you from Westlake High School. On the south side of Atlanta proper. And that push is going to get a first down. And they're still pushing. And number three gets away. And he's still going. Touchdown, Ravens. And that will seal the deal with 41 seconds remaining in the game. Roderick Lewis, the third, has been the man all day for the Miami Garden Ravens. I don't know if Twin City thought the whistle blew. They thought the play was dead. Apparently it was not. And Miami Gardens cashes in and extends their lead back to 12 and will go for the one point conversion. That play is blown dead. False start against the Ravens. So with that, the ball goes to the eight-yard line. Still counts as one. Very good ball game. Delane looking for the open man, and that pass is going to be broken up. The intended receiver, Carlton Dixon. And, you know, this is uh, another one of those games where you know you you know somebody's got to be a winner and you know somebody's got to be a loser but the loser can hold their head high because they came to fight and they absolutely brung it nothing to be ashamed of by the twin city outlaws forty one seconds remaining in the game. And there's the kick. Number two is going to be wrapped up immediately. He's been out there fighting all day. And he'll come off the field. So the outlaws. Try to do something with it 41 seconds. Single man in the backfield, four wide. Number one goes into motion. Get set, pass is complete. Number one gets out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. That is Merritt, the third. He'll get to the around the 32 yard line. And that'll be second and seven. Thirty five seconds remaining in the contest. A 
Long in shotgun. Long puts it up. And that pass is going to be broken up. Double coverage. Number 10, Corey Roll. We'll get credit for the breakup on that one. 34 seconds remaining. That pass is complete. Williams rolls, gets out of bounds. 28 seconds remain, and it's fourth down. So if they don't convert, this will do it. Put it up. And that pass is incomplete. And the ball is going to be turned over on downs. So all Miami Gardens has to do is take the victory formation. And that will wrap the game up. Whale of a contest between two stout defensive teams. Something had to give. And that give came in the form of Roderick Lewis the third. He has had multiple scores. Keeping in mind that one of them was called back due to a penalty. And he has effectively. Been the savior of sorts. When Miami Gardens found themselves in trouble. So here we go. Dulane in shotgun. There's a snap, and he's going to throw it deep. And that's going to be broken up. And that clock's going to stop with 14 seconds on it with the incomplete pass. And the official says, let the clock run. And that'll do it. And I'm getting word on the field that on that pass play, those players were supposed to take the victory knee. So one of the things the coach is going to have to talk to them about is sportsmanship. They knew they had this game in the bag. So that's a discussion he'll have to have with them. Miami Garden. Ravens come away with the victory 18 to 6 over the Twin City Outlaws. This game had defense written all over it. It was the irresistible force meeting the immovable object. Something had to give and that give came in the form of number three. For Miami Gardens. He was basically their Mr. Everything when they got in a jam and needed something. Lots of points left on the field by both teams. Both defenses tightening up in the red zone. Turnovers making a difference. So both teams, yeah, their coaches are going to go back and say, hey, we need a lot of work. But somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. But even in that, Twin City should hold their head high. They did not stop fighting till the very end. So we're getting ready for the Miami Garden Ravens 13U taking on the Rare Breeds 13U. Whale of a contest coming up here at the C1N Labor Day Classic. We thank you for hanging in there with us on pay-per-view. We want to remind you that on the YouTube channel, 
uh, on the C1N YouTube channel that these games will be available. Moxie Media thanks you, and we want to thank Cam Newton and his personnel for entrusting us with the broadcast. We'll be back in just a second. See you in a few.